What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my team selection ahead of the big double game week 36. So I'm going to come on to transfers and captaincy in just a minute. Let's talk about game week 35 first. It wasn't a great week. I will put out a trigger warning. People are going to get triggered by a little bit of hindsight talk here, but it was stuff that I was considering and the swing was absolutely brutal. Um, so I got 43 points with a minus four, so only 39 points total. That did put me from about 12k to 15 and a half k. So it wasn't it doesn't feel like a massive drop but i think not having son really killed me this week he what obviously kane did well as well but nowhere near as good as son and he really was the reason why my rank kind of tanked so low and the fact that hardly any of my players got any points as well now on the deadline stream i wasn't really talking about bringing son in but on saturday morning i suddenly realized i don't know why it took me so long i suddenly realized i could do Havertz to son for free and i was um and ah and over that move and i was gonna uh, i would have probably captain him i said for anyone that's got Salah, uh, sorry, Son or Kane, I probably would captain them ahead of uh, Salah this week. And I was on an R and over it, but I was worried about my bench. Not having a bench when I thought James could get re uh, rotated out, Alonso could get rested as well. And I had Luca Dean sitting there, red flagged, and I just thought there's a chance that none of my bench play. So I was always thinking about transferring out Luca Dean to Robertson anyway, which I did. Then Luca Dean plays, gets eight points. And let's just be honest, he came and played out of nowhere. We didn't even know that he could be back soon. There was original talk when he first got injured that he could be out for the season. Maybe, maybe not. But he was red flagged. So he, that was super frustrating because I would have played him against Norwich. Right? I know he's seen as a bit of a troll and Aston Villa defence, obviously not as good as Liverpool defence. But when it's Norwich at home... You're, you're okay with playing most players. So that, that was really frustrating. But I think the Luca Dean to Robertson move was okay. Then I did Havertz to Foden for a hit, which also worked out. So my hit was okay, given the knowledge that I had. But not going for Son really does hurt. And look, people can say that maybe Salah had played a lot of minutes, arrest was on the cards, fair enough. But for that to happen, the week that Son also goes and gets 19 points was an absolute killer. So really regretful, especially when the big worry was that James and Alonso might get arrested and they both played and then they both blanked as well. So it was a little bit of a nightmare overall. The only players that came in were Foden, which I think was a good buy, just not as good as um, Som. And Kulisewski, obviously, with two assists off the bench. The usual suspects, Robertson, Cancelo, coming with the points. So a bit disappointing. Debravka on the bench was seven as well, but I was always going to play Saar over him, so I'm not too worried about that. A pretty bad week. Didn't fall out of the top 20k or anything, though. Let's see how game week 36 is looking in just a set. But first of all, we're going to talk about Spitch. So happy to say that this team selection video has been sponsored by Spitch. If you have not already checked this game out, make sure you do it. It's weekly fantasy football, right? No worrying about future plans and chips and double game weeks and all that kind of stuff. You just pick a brand new team every single week, which means you get to pick for some more interesting players than maybe you would in FPL. So I'm just going to quickly go into Premier League. You'll see that there's free games and paid for games. You do need to be 18 or over for this. There are also links to begambleaware.org in the description below. I'm going to click on the free game top left hand corner and this is the team that i've come up with now because it's only based on one game no double game weeks the arsenal game is against leeds at home man city is newcastle at home hence the team that i've picked i've gone for de bruyne as mine and i'm just going to confirm that and make sure that i join it for free right and then that's locked in now one thing that i want you to do is join my community so at the bottom you can see communities bottom right hand corner this is the let's talk fpl one there'll be links below to get into that once you've got the game downloaded and anyone in this league has a chance to win prizes for the rest of the season so every single week for game week 36 37 and 38 there'll be a new prize for this week it's a 50 pound voucher so it's completely free to download the game you need to enter to uh, have a chance of winning this prize is free as well you can check out the paid for games if you want but for this one it is the free one so make sure you get it downloaded link in the description below qr code on screen if you just want to scan that let's see who wins the voucher so as always we'll start off with the defense now there's one point I want to make before we get into it, and that's around the free hit chip. So I still have my one free hit chip left. I've got no other chips. That's the only one. And I'm pretty much going to use it in game week 37. So that's obviously, first of all, going to affect my transfers for this week. So for your team, if you've got no chips, Aston Villa players might be a really good option. They've got back-to-back -back double game weeks. Maybe you can bench or deal with them uh, with transfers in game week 38. No issues with that at all. For me, because I'm free hitting in 37 where they've got their two... Um, good fixtures, like their two home fixtures, there's no real need for me to bring them in this week where one of the games is Liverpool 
And then I'd have them in game week 38 where one of the games is Man City. So if you just ignore 37, I'd then be bringing in a player where two of the next three fixtures are, are, are the two best teams in the league. So it's not worth doing it for me. The other question I keep getting asked is why are you using it in 37 not 36 so you're not going to get a bigger score in 36 so that's one thing to kind of differentiate when you're thinking about free hit it's not about total score necessarily it's about the difference in score you can get versus your actual team and obviously you need to take into account you know if I was free hitting in 36 what different transfers would I make in 37 etc but yes the the total score for a free hit in 36 will almost certainly be higher than 37 but once I've made my transfers and I'm going to talk through them in a minute um I'll have 11 double game week players so then the question becomes will the free hit chip just moving around different double game week players will that net me more points than you just using it in 37 i don't think it will i think my team will do enough to warrant not using the free hit yet i could be wrong about that but that's going to be my assumption before the game week kicks off whereas in 37 there's a lot of players like uh, everton play arsenal away game week 38 villa play man city i just don't necessarily want a team full of them but in 37 i think they could do quite well i could also get players like kane son against uh, burnley at home if west ham go through to the europa league final they may rotate very heavily against man city who play them in 37 so i could get different man city players in there's just loads of like kind of different things you could do with the chip in 37 which could go wrong but there's lots of things you could do versus 36 so that's why i'm using it i've made that decision unless i get a lot of injuries this week suddenly from press conferences that's not going to change let's get into the individual players okay so i'm pretty much going to sell jose Sard this week i think you can there's definitely good points to make about him right yes because they're two difficult games he could get a lot of save points those save points could you know if they can manage to get a clean sheet in one of those games that could be a huge score you know a goalkeeper like this bunch of save points gets bonus clean sheet you could suddenly be coming away with a nine or ten pointer with a game still to come with more save points but i don't like the idea of going into a game week where I think my double game week keeper is getting zero clean sheets. So I'm probably going to move him to Edison. Uh, now, I don't usually like, I've said this before, I don't usually like premium goalkeepers for a long period of time. But again, this is just for game week 36 and 38. And I think Man City defence, I know they've obviously gone out of Europe last night, which is going to be uh, a bit of a morale killer, I'm sure, for the players. But they've still got a Premier League. They are in pole position to win. They are still a fantastic team. They're not about to meet Real Madrid in the Premier League, right? They're playing Newcastle and then Wolves. And there's no disrespect to those two teams. But I think most of us think there's possibility to get two clean sheets in this double game week so i'm probably going to bring in edison and then he'd have aston villa at home in game week 38 i think schmeichel's a really good option uh everton at home norwich at home then southampton at home would be the three fixtures over game week 36 and 38 but i think if i can afford it i will probably just back the double defense i'd love laporte for example as long as he's fit and fine for this game week which i'm sure he will be but i just don't see which of my defenders are worth spending a hit on this week to get him in so i think i'll just back the double defense with edison instead now let's go through the players that are a risk so i think trent and cancelo are probably going to start both games right yes cancelo played 120 minutes last night yes i'm sure he's going to be knackered but they don't really have too many other options kyle walker played and then he had to come off I, and obviously they decided to risk him a bit for the rec because it was real madrid because he was up against vinicius and fernandinho had a little bit of a tough time against him in the revert uh, sorry in the first leg but i think cancelo has to play so he's going to play i think trench just had a rest he'll probably be fine as well they're the least of my concerns with robertson yes there is a chance he's going to miss one of the games uh obviously he played the last game when trent got a rest Klopp did mention that you know once you rest one fullback you don't necessarily want to rest both which kind of indicated that robertson might get a rest soon because he did mention simicast as well but he's definitely going to play spurs and then it's just whether or not he's recovered by the aston villa game because there is a little bit of a gap from villa to the fa cup final it's tuesday to saturday so i'm not completely right off and again when people say to me, well, if they're only going to play once, they're no good to you. But if you're spending four points to get a different player in, you've got to be sure that player is going to outscore them. And Robertson, Alonso, and James are all very attacking defenders. That Even if they play once, they could rack up a big score. And who else, realistically, am I even bringing in? I can't get another... 
I don't really want to... I'm not going to swap Alonso or James to another Chelsea defender. I'm not going to swap Robertson to Matip unless it enables like a really good move elsewhere. And there's nothing to say that Matip won't also get a rest in this double game. I don't think he will. I think Canate will play the FA Cup final. But that's not a guarantee either. And that's the problem with this week. There's no guarantees. We're just kind of hoping. And then you look at the other teams that are doubling where there's not going to be much rotation. Maybe Everton and Aston Villa, for example. But then... I don't really want to swap James Alonso or Robertson to an Everton defender when I'm free hitting 37. And obviously Villa have got to play Liverpool. So that's going to be tough for a clean sheet anyway. And then it costs four points. So I think I have to stick with what I've got. I think I just have to trust that arguably these are the top, you know, if everyone's fit and playing for 90 minutes every single week, these are the top five defenders in FPL. You could add Laporte there as a, as a decent centre-back as well, of course. Matt Doherty when he was fit. But right now... This defence on paper looks pretty good. And I just don't see any defenders that are worth a minus four. The only way I would consider it is if it enables a really big move and attack. But I don't think many options do. So it's probably just going to be Saar to Edison in defence. And that is it. Okay, so this is the midfield. Now, one thing I'm currently doing is benching Kulisevsky. Now, he got benched himself in the last game. But obviously, Lucas Moura didn't necessarily play that well. He also got subbed early-ish. And then when Kulisevsky came on, he got two assists, right? So... There, I would be very surprised if Kulisevsky doesn't start the next two games. Uh, it's not guaranteed, of course, but I'd be very surprised. So there is possibly a case to play Kulisevsky ahead of one of the defenders. Um, I'll come on to Rafinha in a minute. My main worry with that is, is getting the wrong defender. What if I bench Robertson for Kulisevsky and Robertson plays twice? What if I bench uh, Alonso or James for Kulisevsky and one of them plays twice? That could be a really big score. And I know what people are going to say, there's almost no chance of them playing both games. But if things crazy things happen in the league and Tuchel's still a little bit worried about top four, he could play them against Leeds. And I think one thing to remember is not just about two, st two starts. It's also about minutes, right? So they could start twice and come off early. You know, maybe around 60, 65 minutes rather than playing 90 minutes in one game and nothing in the second game. That could happen. It's all going to depend on what the what the club doctors and stuff think they can load them with, what the recovery is like and stuff like that. And ultimately, we're just not going to know. So I, I feel like it's a little bit of a risk to bench one of them for Kudasesi, but I could do that. That's kind of my reasonings for right now why he's on the bench. Obviously, the rest of them only have um, single game weeks, so it doesn't matter. With Rafinha, I do think Arsenal away and Chelsea at home, where we think Chelsea are going to rotate quite a bit, is better than Kudoseski against Liverpool away, where they're not going to rotate, and Arsenal at home, who definitely aren't going to rotate either. Uh, and Rafinha, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not worried about the lineup. If he's fit, he's going to play. He's going to play 80 to 90 minutes. If they get a penalty, he's going to take it. While Bamford's still not fit as well. So I, in my opinion, like, and I know there's, I know we can go down the hole. You know, you love Rafinha route and stuff like that. But for me, I just do think he is a better option than Kulaseski this week. I think for me, it's more down to do I bench a defender instead? Because obviously you have to play one striker elsewhere. Salah is almost certainly going to be my captain. I just the only other player I think I would consider is maybe Cancelo, just because of um, two decent games where I think they could get a clean sheet. Or maybe Saka, just because that Leeds at home game looks really good. And I know he's going to play both games. I think with everyone else, there's just some kind of doubt in my mind. Will they get a big enough score? Will they even play twice? And I include Foden in that as well. Now, again, this is all going to come down to recovery. He just played 120 minutes in the Champions League. It could have easily just been 90 minutes done. Everyone's super happy. Everyone plays the next game. Now it's like devastation because they're out and they've had to play 120 minutes. But for what it's worth, yes, I agree. There's a league to win. They're in pole position. Pep can't afford to go into Newcastle and just rest everyone. Obviously, with Man City, there is a lot of good attackers where he could rest Foden. But I think if he's recovered and if he's fine, he probably starts both games. But to put him as a captain is just a step too far. So... I think it has to be a boring Salah shout. I really do. Like, I, I, obviously, it's a double game. I'm sure a lot of people might look at Son or Kane as big differentials. Maybe look at De Bruyne as well. Came off after 71 minutes. As long as he's not picked up an injury, I'm sure he'll start twice. But I think for my team, Salah just makes the most sense, like he does most weeks. I don't. I know a lot of people are going to look at my team and say, where the hell are your Spurs players? Where the hell is Son in particular? 
To get him, I'd have to take a hit. I'd have to remove someone like Robertson and Foden just to get Son in, who's got Liverpool away, Arsenal high. I don't think it's a bad necessarily that bad of a set of fixtures, given how good he is. But I also don't think it's worth a hit, and I wouldn't captain him over Salah. So I'm just going to take the pain a little bit longer and just not go for him. So Salah will be the captain. I don't think I'm going to make any changes in midfield. The only possible one is Kulisewski in for one of the defenders. So adding in my single forward Veghorst, just because he's probably got the best chance of starting and the best fixture combined. Obviously, Wood seems to have lost his place now. Bro, you can never be sure week to week if he's going to start either. But what I'm going to do is bench Veghorst and I'm going to sell Chris Wood. Uh, because I think if I needed Veghorst last day of the season, he does play Newcastle. Again, game week 37 doesn't matter to me at all. So I'm not even giving that any thought. It's just about 36 and 38. And I'm probably going to sell Chris Wood to Inketia. That gives me the money to get Edison in goal. The other combination i could possibly do is richarlison in instead for chris wood and then just sell jose Sar to schmeichel i gotta be honest right it does feel quite close and it does feel like one of those ones that could go either way you know do man city play that game they're a little bit nervous they're a little bit annoyed maybe they're a little bit fatigued from champions league and maybe newcastle do nick a goal and then schmeichel even though there might be rotation in that first game against everton because of the european game for leicester not for him but obviously for their defenders could he still get a clean sheet? And then it's Norwich at home, right? Schmeichel could come away with two back-to-back -back clean sheets, right? And then Richarlison, who's absolutely nailed as long as he's fit and available and on penalties, could possibly outscore in Ketia. So I might get second thoughts on that move by the deadline and just switch it around. But I just like the idea of having double Man City defence. And as long as in Ketia keeps his place, I think he's a pretty good option with Leeds at home. The other thing in my mind is... I don't think Arsenal away is like this completely awful fixture, but that is the fixture Richarlison has last day of the season. And I think if I saw that on paper, I'd almost be drawn to having to transfer him out, which is not necessarily bad. I could play Veghorst instead. I could swap, you know, Richarlison to whoever, Tony against Leeds or someone like that. Um, but I kind of like the idea of having Nketiah. And as long as he hasn't lost his place, he's got Everton at home. And I can maybe think about a different transfer if I wanted to do that instead. So that's kind of what's on my mind. So the team would look like this. You'd have 11 double game week because one on the bench in Kudaseski again, may or may not come in for one of the defenders. And then Edison in goal, which backs the double... Man City clean sheet because I think a lot of people will have Cancelo and Laporte again I think Cancelo and Laporte is a better option because Laporte is decent in the air um so it could get you something from a corner or a free kick whereas Edison really is just two or six points but I think Newcastle at home Wolves away and Villa at home the three fixtures I'd have him for look pretty good for clean sheets so if he gets six points a game or close I'm, I'm kind of okay with that so that's what the team would look like um just really quickly I'm not going to do too much tinkering because obviously there's not too much left of the season anyway and game week 38 look depending on my rank I could try and do something a little bit crazy I could play safe I don't know but this is what the team looks like for this week in game week 38 37 I'd be free hitting and then in game week 38 this is what the team looks like one of the other reasons I don't want to sell too many players for a minus four is they've got really good fixtures in game week 38 so I'm almost thinking to myself with James and Alonso it's not just 36 you know yes they might only play one game but then I've got them for Watford at home. And I know some people might say they've got nothing to play for at that point. They might rotate. But I think you put out a fair, you know, maybe there's a player which you've not been able to get into the side enough this season. You give them a run out. But there's every chance that a lot of these teams just play full strength. Um, and James and Alonso against Watford at home. I mean, that's about as good as it's going to get, especially when Watford are almost certainly going to be relegated at that point. Liverpool against Wolves is decent. I think Man City versus Aston Villa at home is pretty good as well. And then I've got the choice of Kudaseski or Rafinha, right? Brentford away or Norwich away. Again, I'd probably have to go for Kudaseski, although that would pay me to do it. But I think by going in Ketia, as long as Lacazette doesn't come back in, I'm not forced to make a forward transfer. And essentially, I'm not forced to do anything. So it does leave my options slightly open. The biggest worry is no Son for that week. So I might have to sell Robertson and Foden and just get Son in and possibly captain him as well. Because not having Kane or Son against Norwich away just looks like absolute suicide. The one move I'm just going to mention right now, which I think I can do, let me just get rid of Nketiah, would be Kane in. And then I think I can sell Salah, yeah, to a 7.3. So I could get in a punt in midfield uh instead if i done if i got schmeichel in i could get someone like Havertz. unfortunately i can't afford them for 7.3 but i might get in a cheap midfielder and just go for kane captain up front i know i know what you're thinking salah out for a hit just seems crazy i completely agree i probably won't do it but the thinking is is there possibly but i think it's 
the, the more likelihood is I just sell Robertson for a hit and Foden and just get Son in and captain him. And again, Robertson and Foden out for a hit could really backfire. But to get Son in against Norwich would be pretty good. So that's kind of my thinking. The, a lot of the reason why I don't want to sell um, too many of these players for a hit, because on paper they can do uh, really, really good things. Um, and I just, yeah, okay, yeah, two, two transfers used, minus four. I thought I'd use the wrong graphic there. But anyway, we're at the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do check out Spitch if you haven't already in your 18 or over. Link in the description below uh, to get that down downloaded. Get into the community as well to make sure that you're in with a chance of winning that £50 prize as well. And obviously, get your team submitted. You're probably not going to beat me, but you can try, right? Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, and I will be back tomorrow with the Game Week preview.